People with a medical condition know a lot about living with their disease, and their experiential knowledge can be really useful to others who have the same diagnosis. Medical support groups for patients have come about because of the value of this sharing. Many patients are used to taking part in research as research participants. This might involve filling in a questionnaire, having tests done, or receiving new treatments. There's a clear boundary between professionals and patients and an obvious difference in power. Being involved in research is different. Patient and public involvement in research, or PPI, can be defined as research that is carried out with or by those who have experience of a condition. Everyone works together to design and run the research study. High quality research now requires that the lived body experience of patients is included at all stages, from study design through to sharing results. This brings benefits to both researchers and patient communities alike. Various terms are used for different levels of patient involvement, and the terminology can be confusing. At the top end of the spectrum of patient involvement, we find terms such as co-production and patient-led research. These approaches share the power between patients and researchers and prioritise research that is considered relevant and important by the patient community. Patient-led research can be initiated by a patient community and supported by researchers, or it can be carried out by patient researchers, people who are researchers who study the condition that they have personal experience of as a patient. Dr. Ruoko Wallace is a clinical psychologist, lecturer, and clinical tutor on the University of Bath's clinical psychology doctorate course. She is also an adult survivor of a rare congenital birth defect called esophageal atresia. Babies with this condition are born unable to swallow because the esophagus has not developed normally and there is no connection between the mouth and the stomach. The condition requires surgical repair at a specialist paediatric surgical centre. The early years can be very challenging for families with feeding difficulties, frequent chest infections, gastroesophageal reflux and other issues to contend with. These problems generally get better with time and most individuals go on to live healthy lives, but some patients will experience long-term health complications. As a patient, Dr. Wallace is a member of the medical support group Tracheoesophageal Fistula Support, TOFS, a registered charity which supports people born unable to swallow. She has been a patient participant in one of the key long-term follow-up studies of esophageal atresia, the Helsinki study. She also has a role with TOFS as a professional psychologist and has been invited to speak at the TOFS conference about the psychological impact of living with a rare health condition. She participates in the charity's medical advisory group and an international working group, which is developing multidisciplinary guidelines for patients' transition from paediatric to adult health care. Adult survivors of esophageal atresia are important to TOFs in a couple of ways. Firstly, they can be inspirational to the parents of uh, esophageal atresia children, and, and they can show that for many, the difficulties experienced in the early years do get much less troublesome. But it's also important to recognise that esophageal atresia is a lifelong condition, and ongoing surveillance is important. And furthermore, we also have to recognise that for some adult survivors, they do have significant ongoing difficulties. And it's important that we have these adult survivors involved with us who can at first hand identify with these issues, particularly in terms of uh, the impact on their quality of life. At the time when I was born, surgery for esophageal atresia entailed a long separation from parents. Families didn't get any emotional support and children were discharged from paediatric care without ongoing follow-up. Little was known about OA-related health problems in adults or about the importance of psychological support in a health setting. When I discovered TOFs, I was able to meet other adult survivors for the first time 
and I learned about some of the health complications I had experienced and I was able to get treatment from my GP. I have also met many families affected by OA, which has been very special. I think parents who are worried and struggling gain a lot of hope from adult survivors and talking with the families led me to want to do something to support them. I feel very grateful for the life I've been able to live thanks to Urja Vihma, a pediatric surgeon who was woken up in the middle of the night to operate on me. And it's a huge privilege to be able to use both my lived and professional experience now to help the wider OA patient community. Dr Wallace realised that she could use her research skills together with her lived experiences as a patient as a participant in research studies and in the various working groups and at TOPS events to develop a better understanding of the mental health of families. TOPS has been involved in Dr Wallace's research at all levels from suggesting ideas for research all the way through to disseminating results to patients and families. It's recognised that living with a rare health condition can affect a person's quality of life and mental health. Dr Wallace's first research study has now been published. She set out to determine how common anxiety and depression are in parents of children with OA and to identify the family circumstances particularly related to parents experiencing more anxiety and depression. An online study was developed and publicised by TOPS. 240 parents from 17 countries filled in the survey. The results revealed that parents commonly experience both anxiety and depression and that these symptoms are more common in younger parents, parents who felt that they had less support caring for their child, parents who experienced more stress related to caring and parents with financial difficulties. These findings emphasise the need for adequate support for families. It was also found that anxiety and depression were more common in parents whose child had esophageal atresia related feeding difficulties. Dr Wallace is currently analysing qualitative survey data to investigate parents' experiences of feeding their child. Understandably, swallowing problems can cause anxiety and psychological interventions could be helpful. The whole experience absolutely affects one's mental health as a carer, and I'm fairly robust, but it has all taken its toll. Other projects suggested by the TOFS patient community have been taken up by Dr Wallace's research students and developed in collaboration with TOFS. Families' experiences of transition from paediatric to adult health care is being investigated by a doctorate student. Adult survivors in TOFS said they often get left out of research, so the psychological well-being and mental health of adults born with esophageal atresia was taken up by her MSc students. This has now been published, and the students were invited to present their findings at the National TOFS Conference, where they also ran a workshop for adults. It was wonderful working with adults born of OA throughout my research project. Their unique knowledge and perspective helped me to design a more relevant, accessible and meaningful study for the patient community. I was also able to gain valuable insights into the interpretation and impact of the research findings when discussing them at a workshop during the 2019 TOFS conference. The study also made use of an online survey and a total of 92 participants from 11 countries took part. The results indicate that adults born with OA can face emotional challenges that negatively affect their psychological well-being and mental health. Some individuals, however, demonstrate resilience through positive reappraisal of adverse experiences. The findings suggest that psychological support could be beneficial as part of follow-up care. Dr Wallace and her students look forward to continued collaboration with TOFS to get a better understanding of the support that families need. I feel it's really important to see adult TOFS present and involved in the TOFS charity, conferences and research, as they have a personal understanding of the challenges adult TOFS have faced and continue to face, gaining the appropriate support and understanding.